Hello there. In this video, I'll illustrate how to determine the upper and lower control limits for a p-chart or proportions chart. This question corresponds to supplement problem 6.13 in your text. It's a very simple problem actually here. The defect rate for data entry of insurance claims has historically been about 1.5% and we're asked to calculate the control limits at different sample sizes and sigma limits. But before we go and calculate all of the control limits, we want to determine what formula we can use. Well, the basic formula for the upper and lower control limits for the proportion is equal to P bar, or the average number of defects, plus Z, or some number of standard deviations, times the standard deviation of the sample proportion, or P hat. The standard deviation of the sample proportion is actually equal to P bar times one minus P bar over N, which is the sample size, and you take the square root of that. So that's what we'll use for our formula as we progress. So in requirement A, we're asked to determine the control limits if we use a sample size of 100 and three sigma limits, or basically Z equals three. Well, using our formula, the upper control limit is equal to 0 0.015, which is P bar, plus three sigma at Z times the square root of 0 0.015 times 0 0.9 Eight five since 1 minus 0 0.015 is 0.985 divided by 100. And that's the part of the formula that's p bar times 1 minus p bar over n. And we take the square root of all that. If we break that down a little bit, that is equal to 0 0.015 plus 3 times 0 0.01215. And that will give you a final answer of 0 0.0515. We can also make note that for all of our work, that numerator is always gonna be the same because we're always working with a defect rate of 1.5%. So 0 0.015 times 0.985 will always be 0 0.0148. So if we work down to the lower control limit, that's 0 0.015 minus three times 0 0.01215. And that will give you a lower control limit of negative 0.0215. But you can't have a negative lower control limit, so that means zero. Now for requirement B, what if the sample size is 50 and we're using three sigma? No problem. Our upper control limit is equal to 0.015 plus still three sigma, but now we're going to multiply this by 0.0148 in the numerator divided by 50. This would be 0.0. 1, 5 plus 3 times 0 0.0172 and that'll get you a an upper control limit of 0 0.0666 roughly. The lower control limit is 0 0.015 minus 3 times 0 0.0172 and you also end up with a negative number for that which means we have to go with 0 for a lower control limit. Part C, sample size of 102 sigma. Upper control limit 0 0.015 plus 2 this time. Now we can go back and reuse the 0 0.01215 from requirement A because both the numerator and the denominator are the same. And that should get you an upper control limit of about 0 0.0393. Depends on the level of rounding you're doing here. It's recommended that you keep your digits to at least four significant digits. And if you're using your calculator memory, then you can keep all of the significant digits. The lower control limit P 0 0.015 minus 2 times 0 0.0125. Well, that's going to be a negative number again, so go with 0. For requirement D, sample size of 50 and 2 sigma, UCL is equal to 0 0.015 plus 2 sigma. Now we can go back to what we had in requirement B, 0 0.0172, and that would give us an upper control limit of 0 0.0494, and the lower control limit 0 0.015 minus 2 times 0 0.0172, and that will also give you a negative value. E we're being asked, well, what happens to the standard deviation of the sample proportion when the sample size is larger? Well, if we look at this formula, whenever we increase the denominator, so as n increases, the entire result will decrease, which means that the standard deviation of the proportion will decrease. So as sample size increases, the standard deviation of the sample proportion will decrease. And finally, for requirement F, 
Explain why the lower control limit cannot be less than zero. The lower control limit can be zero, but never negative, because it's impossible to have less than zero defects. And there we have it, the calculation of PCHAR control limits with varying sample size and sigma limits.